I'm clicking burgers out in the back, Liz. And Odie's playing with the squirrels again. <laughs> oh, and I brought my binoculars out so I could study any birds that... Hey, where'd my binoculars go? Let's see if there's anything edible going on in the neighborhood. Doesn't look like Mr. Fusilli is having pizza delivered. Nope. Mrs. Krell isn't baking pies and putting them on her window ledge to cool and mysteriously disappear. Uh-oh, those guys again. Al and Pete, the worst dog catchers in the business. Great, boss. Catching strays all over the place. All it took was promising us that big cash bonus for everyone we bring in. Good. Remember, though, my offer expires this afternoon. Bye. Whoa, I can't wait to collect that money. Hey, there's one. <sighs> hey, you guys. <laughs> you couldn't catch a hot dog in a bun. Let's get him! Uh, technically we can't. He's not a stray. He's on his master's property. Oh, well. Plenty more dogs and cats out there to catch. Let's go! <laughs> Amazingly, they actually seem to have caught some. Arrivederci, guys! Are they gone? Myron, why are you hiding? They're hunting down every stray dog and cat they can find. They're getting bonuses for every one of us they catch. That's awful. But don't worry, Myron. I'll do everything I can to protect you and all the strays. Garfield, lunch is ready. Lunch? <laughs> Just stay out of their way. Bye-bye. <laughs> That means more lunch for a certain orange cat. Mm -hmm. Squirrels, we have an emergency. Hurry, we need you down there. Mm -hmm. Bye. Garfield, how many burgers do you want? Well, how many you got? Huh? <laughs> Must be my stomach. I haven't eaten since noon, and it's almost 12:45. <laughs> It sure is. I have six empty buns and nothing to put in them. I'm going to call the gardener, or a geologist, or someone! Whoever you call, see if he can stop on his way here and pick up some burgers. Uh-oh, I don't like this. Someone once said that cats always land on their feet. I'd like to have a word with that person. This is a tunnel. Who would dig a tunnel right under our house? Oh, oh my, oh my. This isn't good. I'm days behind schedule. Knock, knock. Anybody there? You there. I must ask you to leave. This is a construction site, and I must resume my digging. You're digging? What digging? I'm digging an underground expressway for my fellow moles. Huh? A network of them, actually. We have a hard time going from one place to another. The main reason being that we can't often see where we're going. See these lines? They represent tunnels that will allow moles to travel quickly and safely all over, I mean, under the city. And this is the tunnel I'm digging right now. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Not very. Your tunnel collapsed our entire backyard, and not only that, 
You ruined my lunch. Sorry, but there is a price we pay for progress. Back to work. Wait, we need to talk. Or not. Ooh. Mm. You know, John, doesn't make a bad hamburger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Garfield, those dog catchers have become cat catchers. Hm. They're getting some big bonus for rounding up all us strays. You gotta hide me. I'm busy, Harry, but go hide behind the garage. What a pal. Whoa! <laughs> Big bonus is getting larger and larger. <laughs> Garfield, we need your help. Who doesn't? Someone's digging a tunnel that's destroying our tunnels, where we live. If he doesn't stop, we'll all have to move far away. <laughs> Don't worry, Odie. You won't lose your little squirrel friends. I've got an idea. <laughs> I have to go draw up some plans, and then I'll put you this. Hey, Digger, I hope you're happy. The squirrels are going to have to move away. Sorry, but one cannot stand in the way of progress. Before you destroy our home, we thought you'd enjoy a little farewell show. Just to show there's no hard feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have work to do. Tunnels to dig. <laughs> all right, all right, but only a short show. Amazing, but now I have to get back to work. Hmm. Okay, guys, show's over. Our friend has a tunnel to dig. <laughs> Bye. 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 Happy digging. Okay, let's see which way I dig next. Oh dear, I've been digging the wrong way. How terrible! I dug east when I should have dug west. Oh, now I'm really going to be behind schedule. Where's the new tunnel going, Garfield? Oh, you'll see. Let's see. Now I go left. I don't remember the route going this way, but maps are never wrong. <laughs> Never get out of here. I thought Garfield would do something, but I guess he doesn't care about us. Oh dear, this can't be where I was supposed to dig. Oh, it's exactly where you're supposed to dig. <laughs> Come on! This one out has fleas. Where do you see how many dogs and cats we caught, boss? You're gonna have to pay us such a bonus. We'll see. We'll see. Uh. Yeah, right. Absolutely full. But, but, but it was full. It was. You two are the worst dog and cat catchers I've ever seen in my life. You're fired! 
turn in your nets and get out! Thanks, Garfield. We owe you one. We owe you a lot more than one. Always glad to help. And now I am hopelessly lost. Don't worry. Let me have that plan. I took the liberty of drying up a new map for you, and I, uh, <clears throat> I even got it approved by the Mold Planning Council. Ooh, I have a lot of digging to do, but I won't stop until it's done. Bye, all of you. Where's he digging, Garfield? Yeah, where, where does the new tunnel go? Well, let's put it this way. In about 18 months, we'll be able to go down this hole and bring back Chinese food. Authentic Chinese food. for ice cream. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> Don't waste your time, Garf. Squeak, how'd you know I was up here? I know all, I see all, and I see that the ice cream truck will hit a pothole in the street, and a case of chocolate num-num bars with almonds will pop out. Chocolate num num bars with almonds. Told you, I have developed the power to see into the future. <laughs> by the way, the garbage truck is about to come by, and when it hits the same pothole, you'll be covered with 30 pounds of rotten mackerel. You know, I always like a little smelly fish with my chocolate num num bars. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now that I'm defished, I need to find out how Squeak did that. You want to know how I know what's going to happen before it happens? John's doing chores. He's about to hit his thumb with a hammer. How could you possibly know? Oh, oh. oh that hurts! Oh. I'll hide. He's gonna come in and say, oh, I smashed my poor little thumb with that big hammer. <laughs> oh, I smashed my poor little thumb with that big hammer! Oh. Now he's gonna trip over Odie. Odie, oh. pull it out! <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna wander off wondering how I do this. <laughs> Whew. Right again. You're wondering, too. Well, I'll let you in on the secret. I've been doing something you've been doing. That's right. In fact, you're doing it right this second. Come on. I've been watching the Garfield Show. John got this new satellite dish with all these new channels. And on one of them, guess what I found? Here it comes. Boy, what I won't do for ice cream. <laughs> yes! Here it goes. So you see, the reason I know what's going to happen before it happens is that I've seen this cartoon already. Yeah, really. John and Garfield, they don't know about this terrific channel. And they don't know I've been recording episodes and storing them on the video recorder here. The episode you're watching, it's a rerun, and I recorded it three weeks ago. Here, I'll jump ahead. I'll jump ahead. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Let's see what happens in the next scene. Squeak, I don't know how you predict the future, but... I know, I know. You want me to feed you my predictions and you'll become famous as the cat who can predict the future, future, future. Deal. <laughs> That's coming up. 
I better get in there so I can be in that scene. Huh? Okay, here's my idea, Odie. I'll give out Squeak's predictions, and I'll become famous as the cat who can predict the future. future. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Squeak. I don't know how you predict the future, but... I know, I know. You want me to feed you my predictions and you'll become famous as the cat who can predict the future, future, future. Deal. <laughs> Come on, Odie. Let's get to work. Uh -huh. Now comes the part where I give Garfield predictions and he passes them on to John. Garfield! I don't know how you knew that meteor was going to crash down to Earth, but you shoved me aside just in time. <laughs> and earlier, you guessed who'd win that soccer match and you even knew the final score. <gasps> Is it possible you've become the cat who can predict the future, future, future? Hmm. How did I know you were going to say that? Why? The scientific community has been rocked by reports of a cat that can predict the future. In the last seven days, Garfield Cat has predicted the outcome of the American World Series, the outcome of the Indianapolis 500 motor race, and the outcome of the legendary Kentucky Derby. He also amazingly predicted that those three events, usually held months apart, would all, for some reason, take place in the same week. But perhaps the cat's most impressive forecast came to You're famous, Garfield. I don't know how you do it. Tonight, Garfield's powers will be tested on a special telecast of the TV series Somebody's Got Talent. If he can indeed predict the future, he will win one million dollars. <laughs> That's right. We'll win one million dollars. I'll win one million dollars. I'm going to get ready to go down to the station. Come on, Odie. Ready to go, Squeak? I'll meet you down there, Garf. There's something I gotta do first. Suit yourself. Just make sure you're there to give me the predictions so I'll pass their test. John probably thinks I'll spend the whole million on lasagna, but that's silly. I'll spend half on ravioli. I realized something. I realized I'd never watched the end of this episode. Here we go, guys. When we return home, we'll have a million bucks. I'll have a million bucks. I need to know what happens in the end so I'll know what to tell Garfield is gonna happen. What? Episode deleted? That can't be. I, I must have accidentally hit the delete button. It's gone. What am I gonna do if I can't watch the end of this episode? I know! This episode is on right now! It is! You're watching it, right? Well, then I can watch it. I just need to turn to the channel. The Garfield Show will not be seen, so we can bring you tonight's special edition of Somebody's Got Talent! We've been preempted. The show's not on. Quick, call the station and complain. <laughs> oh, no. Garfield's going to be so mad. And right now, that's the only thing I can predict. And now, the host of Somebody's Got Talent, Dr. Whipple. Oh, good evening. As usual, I'm joined tonight by the lovely actress, Kate Turkey Baster. I vote no. Until there's an act on stage. And also with us is the famous food critic, Eddie Gourmand. Hello, world! That's right. I'm talking to each and every one of you. Ready to go on, Garfield? No. Where's my mouse? Tonight, our first contestant is a local cat who claims to be able to predict the future. I vote yes! Not yet. We've arranged a special test, which of course he will fail, because it's impossible to predict the future. I just knew you'd say that. I vote no. You stay out of this. I have every right to say what I want to say. Where I did we go? I can't talk to you. don't know what you're talking well, about. How did you know that? That this is not true. All right. And I can even talk Come about on. food if I want. Can I get a word in here, please? <laughs> Gotta get there. No. <laughs> no. Garfield will be asked to predict which of the 52 playing cards I will draw from the deck. If he's right, 
he will win one million dollars. <laughs> and just to make things interesting, if Garfield is wrong, his owner, Mr. Arbuckle, will be dropped into this <laughs> vat containing 10 tons of rancid cottage cheese. I voted for soft frozen yogurt. Ooh, I love soft frozen yogurt. All right, Garfield. For $1 million, what card did I pick? <laughs> Uh, uh. Squeak, where are you? You have 15 seconds, Garfield. Squeak, how could you abandon me like this? I'm gonna have to just take a wild guess. I'll pick the three of clubs. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm just gonna have to guess. Uh, Jack of Diamonds? Time's up, Garfield. What card am I holding? <gasps> the Jack of Diamonds? No, I'm sorry, it was the Three of Clubs. Garfield! Is John mad at you? No, not really. He did say, though, that the only thing he's gonna feed me for the next year is rancid cottage cheese. Hey, Squeak, how did you make those accurate predictions? I've been watching the Garfield show. What? This show. It's on this great channel I found on the TV. Look. Whoa. Is John mad at you? You've just been watching this episode? Uh, squeak, when I get my hands uh -oh. on you, yeah. Don't hurt me, Garfield. I'm sorry. Looks like the mailman's putting that cheap gas in his truck again. Okay, stay still, will ya? No. Oh no, you ain't going anywhere. You're staying with me. <sighs> my, my, aren't we jumpy this morning? Come back here. I have to deliver you. Huh? Oh. Here's your mail, Arbuckle. It's your problem now. Have a lousy day. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Look, Garfield. A gift from my friend Pablo, who lives in Mexico. Hmm. I wonder what it is. There's a very simple way of finding out. Open the package. Mm. It seems to be some kind of bean. Your friend Pablo is so generous. A bean. <laughs> Maybe next year I'll send you an entire raisin. <laughs> My friend Pablo sent me this bean, Odie. <gasps> Huh, it's alive! Or it just had a bad case of the hiccups. Garfield, don't just stand there. Stop this, this, this bean thing. Hey, do I look like a bean catcher? I'm going to call Pablo and find out just what it was he sent me. Keep going, Odie. You're doing great. Notice the cat is too smart to do this kind of thing. What exactly is it, Pablo? It's bouncing all around my house here. 
<laughs> it is a Mexican jumping bean, mi amigo. I thought you would enjoy it. They're a lot of fun as long as nobody is stupid enough to swallow one. <laughs> Oh, no! I'll have to call you back, Pablo. Bodie, are you all right? Uh-huh. Nothing wrong? Uh-uh. Oh, this doesn't look good. <gasps> Maybe not, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> Before he destroys the entire house. Good point. Oh, you've got to get it. Me. Oh, no. Here, hold on tight while I figure out what to do. No, do it. Just relax, Mr. Schnitzel. Tell Dr. Whipple what's bothering you. Well, I, I've been terrified by dogs since I was a little kid. And now it's gotten to the point where I see dogs everywhere. I can't even leave my home. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to understand, Mr. Schnitzel, dogs are perfectly friendly creatures. The dog is man's best friend. You have nothing to worry about. There, there! A dog! There's a dog outside the window! <laughs> what is it, Mr. Schnitzel? Out with it, man! I don't see any dog. We are, after all, on the 18th floor here. No, Mr. Schnitzel. I'd say you're suffering from your basic canine delusion. It's not uncommon. I once treated a man who insisted he saw cocker spaniels in his oatmeal. <laughs> Poor fellow. Worst case of canine delusion I've ever seen. <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> Dogs outside an 18th story window? <laughs> well, what do you know? There is a dog outside my 18th story window. Could you at least bounce through Vito so I could pick up a couple of slices? Dog catcher Al at your service, Chief. I'm out here on patrol looking for stray mutts and coochies. Well, you better find one. You haven't caught a dog since last August, and that one turned out to be a stuffed toy. Dog catcher! Dog catcher! Oh, if I don't catch a pooch soon, the chief's gonna demote me to inspecting flea collars. Dog catcher! There's a scary dog with an enormous tongue roaming the city and terrorizing me. I mean, terrorizing people. Gary Dog? Where? In the skies. He just flew past my 18th story window? Yeah. Well, I think someone's gonna throw a net over you, pal. No! Oh, there he is! 
You sure it's a dog? He looks more like a kangaroo to me. You're a dog catcher? Do your duty and catch him? Sure thing. Here I go. All right. <laughs> Calm down, Whipple. Just tell yourself, dogs are your friends. Dogs are your friends. Dogs are your friends. <sighs> there now. Problem solved. I'll never be scared of dogs again. Ah! The dogs are after me. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Oh, how am I going to find Odie and Garfield? <sighs> Guess I'll just have to follow the trail of chaos and destruction. <sighs> Look both ways before you bounce across the street. I hope I have the right area code for Mexico. Pablo, it's John again. What would I do if someone did swallow that bean? <laughs> Who could be that as stupid? But if someone did, the only solution would be to bounce it out of them. It would have to be a super bounce, however. Thanks, Pablo. Well, he was of no help whatsoever. I haven't had so much fun since kindergarten. Fired? Fired. Again. Hey. Glad that's over. The only question now is what we do with this. I think I have an idea. Next course, please. Thank you. I think I'll have some apple pie, and after that, we'll watch TV together. What do you say? Thank you, old bean. Hey, if it doesn't work out, I can always make soup out of it. <laughs> Oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm taking a nap. I deserve it. After all, I just saved the entire planet. That's right. The whole planet and everyone on it, you included. You see, it all started far out in space. I mean, far out. They have this popular chain of fast food restaurants. They're all over the galaxy. You'll find one on practically every asteroid. Welcome to Neptunian Nuclear Chicken. May I take your order, please? I will have the Jupiter-sized module of chicken wings. Extra crunchy. Jupiter space pack, extra crunchy. Oh, and a side of coleslaw. One side of coleslaw. Thank you. Now you might be wondering how I know about this, right? Well, I've seen this cartoon before. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this chain of restaurants is owned by this not very nice guy. What do you mean? I can't open another bajillion restaurant. No one tells me what I can't do. But Commander Harlan, we have not enough chickens. Maybe not, but we will. Come with me. Where are we going? 
Anticipating this need, I set up a secret research outpost on Earth. In no time at all, they were streaking towards Earth, where certain individuals you may recognize were stopping for chow. We're just going in for a small snack. Do you know what a small snack is, Garfield? Do you know what a foolish question is, John? Even if you took every chicken on this planet, it would not be enough for your needs, Commander. That is why we've developed a ray that will turn every man, woman, and animal on this planet into <laughs> a chicken. Bring in the test subject, and we'll see how it works. <laughs> Pepperoni and a mushroom. Uh. Sausage and a black olive. Meat <laughs> <laughs> lovers is special. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Leave some room, Garfield. We're making a lasagna. I don't see your delivery boy working today, Vito. Oh, I just sent him to make a delivery across the street. He'll be right back. No, he wouldn't be, because the delivery boy was about to become... The delivery chicken. But I just came to deliver a pizza. Just stand there for one more moment. <laughs> this ray, this will really transform him into, yes, <laughs> a chicken. Oh. You owe me Get back to Vito's. $12 for the pizza plus... It worked! Can we fry him now? Not yet. First, I have to bombard the entire city. will work faster on some than others, but soon they will all be chickens. <laughs> Everyone? Every Earth creature except anyone who is at this moment ingesting an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato paste, and pasta. <laughs> Who would imagine that an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato sauce, and pasta could taste so good? Mmm, <laughs> that was great. Hey, Odie, something wrong? Uh-uh. Oh, my God! <laughs> Odie, that's the worst chicken imitation I've ever seen. <laughs> That was the best one. What do I do? What do I do? I know. I'll ask John. We should be going, Garfield. We have to stop on the way home and. Tell me it's not so. Tell me John and Odie haven't been turned into chicken. <laughs> Italian chicken, chicken parmesan. I have to get out of this coop, a uh, restaurant. Ah, help, I need help, lots of help. A policeman, he help. Officer, officer, I would like to report two people and a dog being mysteriously transformed into chickens. Buck, 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 buck. Ah, crazy things are happening. As the chickening of the population spread across the state, the governor called a hurried press conference. <laughs> this is awful. This is a disaster. Things could not be worse. <laughs> the 
Let this be a lesson to you. Never say things could not get worse. Things will always find a way of getting worse. It landed in the park. It was met by the rotten commander Harlan. It will take many trips, but we'll transport all the chickens back home. <laughs> I can hardly wait to start frying them all up. Frying them all up? How are you going to get them all into our spacecraft? Simple. Chickens love corn. <laughs> I need to find some way to get inside. Uh, and then he... <clears throat> I joined the procession of poultry. And I would have made it too, except I suddenly remembered something awful. <laughs> I'm allergic to chicken feathers! <laughs> Aren't you even gonna say Gazunte? Stop that, cat! He should have been turned into a chicken by now! Turn me into a chicken. Turn everyone into a chicken. You notice this guy only has one idea? But I'm going. I need. Huh? <laughs> See the two with the real dumb expressions? I think those are John and Odie. You might as well give up. <laughs> I'm trapped. Farewell, Cathood. I hope I'm this good looking when I'm a chicken. I don't know how you escaped my transformation ray, cat. Do you by any chance eat huge quantities of lasagna? Well, that explains it. But you'll never eat it again, you hear me? From now on until you're served in a bucket. It's chicken feed for you. No, no! Not me! I'm not! <laughs> oh no, all out of chicken. Oh, but wait, now's my chance to try out these earth chickens. So now the question is, how do I change everyone in town back into everyone in town? Oh, you look positively scrumptious. Uh, <gasps> hey, this might work out. Don't worry, you're going to be delicious. Now, where's that spatula? <laughs> so how would you like someone to prevent you from winding up next to a little cup of cold slaw? Uh, please! Well, I think we can make a deal. And a deal we made. And I'll say this for the guy. He was a chicken of his word. He told me how to change him back, and then he changed everyone else back, including you. Even blanked out all your memories, so you have no idea that you were ever a chicken. Then, as he agreed, he and his aide left the Earth after promising never to return for takeout. And that's how I saved the entire planet. And now everything is back to normal. I'm going to go start making dinner, Garfield. We're having, uh... Um... Nut fried chicken. Lasagna. Fine. <laughs> Like I said, everything is back to normal. Except, of course, John does lay an egg once in a while, which I don't understand at all because boy chickens don't lay eggs.
Hot it is so. For those of you who watch the show in Spanish, hace calor. It's so hot. It's extremely hot. Bodie, we have to do something. We have to get off this floor and come up with some idea how to cool off, right? Okay. We get up on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> it's hot. Boy, is it hot. It is hot. It's so hot. Hot it is so. And we're looking at another week of record temps with no relief in sight. It's really, really hot. How hot is it? It's so hot people are now going on internet auction sites and bidding on shade. It's so hot, the Statue of Liberty is wearing a bikini. It's so hot, chickens Aww. are laying poached eggs. Who says the news doesn't take things seriously these days? We've only been able to find one man who is pleased about the record-breaking temperatures. It's Mr. Anthony Allwork, attorney and businessman. Mr. Allwork, everyone is suffering so. Why are you so happy about this weather? Well, you'd be happy, too, if you owned all the companies that make air conditioners, ice cream, and sunblock. Want a snow cone? Sure. Fifty bucks. <gasps> Some people will make money off anything. But Garfield and Odie had a good idea taking those patio chairs out back. But I didn't hear the back door open. Pull up a chair. I just drank all the lemonade, but you could suck on an ice cube. Mm, Garfield! When it's this hot, this is about as fast as any of us can run. wonder who that is. Can't be the pizza delivery guy. He melted this morning. Huh? <laughs> Drusilla, Minerva. No, I'm Minerva. She's Drusilla. Hello, Uncle John. <laughs> what are you doing here? I. Oh, no. Today was the day. Today was the day you promised to take us camping in the woods. You did promise, Uncle John. Yes, you promised! But today, in this heat, out in the woods, you can't be serious. All right, you're serious. We'll go camping in the woods, in this heat. Yay! Will the kitty cat come along? You promised us the kitty would come along. We <gasps> I'm sure there's nothing Garfield would like more than to go camping in this heat with the two of you. No! No! I'll give up lasagna! I'll move in with Nermal! Anything! But don't make me go camping with Drusilla and Minerva. Kitty hat! We want to play with the kitty! We want to play with the kitty! No! No, Drusilla and Minerva! No! <laughs> Send me to Abu Dhabi. Fourth class if you have to, I don't care. Oh wait, you need a stamp on me. Just hurry, or I'll have to go camping with Drusilla and Minerva. Thanks, I'll take that. <sighs> it's too hot to try and figure this out. We're taking the twins camping and that's that. Kitty hat! 
Have pity on a poor kitty cat. I don't do camping. Help! He'll protect us from wild animals. Yay! Camping with Garfield! <laughs> 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 I wanna be home, I wanna be home, I wanna be home, I wanna be home. Ah, finally, the tents are up. Now, I know what I wanna do. We wanna go for a hike! Let's roast marshmallows! Let's play hopscotch! We wanna have a dance party! But it's 110 degrees in the shade! Shade? Where? I don't see any shade. I just want to dive in the lake and cool off. Yahoo! <laughs> 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 The sun is so hot. Most of the water in the lake evaporated. The lovely flowers are drying out in the hot sun. Do something, Uncle John. What do these kids want? Do they think John can make it rain or something? All these years, I think we've been underestimating John. Huh? Oh. <laughs> the heat wave is over! This will cool everyone off! This will... Uh, hold it. My cell phone's ringing. John's ringtone sounds very familiar. Buddy, huh? you recognize that tune? Oh. Kitty hat! Kitty hat! Oh. Kitty hat! No, I'm happy to talk to you. I'm happy because it's raining. Raining? Where are you? In the forest, about five miles from you. Aren't you enjoying this rain? Rain? I always knew you were out of your mind. But you're out of your mind! It's 112 degrees and there isn't a cloud in the sky. No, it's raining. And we're out here and... Oh, wait. It isn't raining? <sighs> of course it isn't raining. Hey. It's snowing! <laughs> it's snowing! Just like at Christmas! It's almost a blizzard! Drusilla and Minerva are making a snow Garfield! Oh. And the real Garfield just threw a snowball at me! Don't you see it's snowing, Aunt Ivy? Don't you see? Aunt Ivy? Are you there, Aunt Ivy? Duh. I gotta get out of this family. Hmm. Odie, don't you think something a little odd is happening? My mistake, I asked Odie to think. Hey, it's getting windy. Uncle John, here's wind. Can we fly a kite? Oh, maybe we'd better get some shelter somewhere. Oh. And now it's hailing! Come on! Uncle John! We're scared! Don't worry, girls. I'm in charge. Now I'm scared. Rain, snow, hail. What's next? Sandwiches? <gasps> Cheese sandwiches! <laughs> We better get out of here. Let's stick around. Maybe it'll start raining potato salad. Uncle John, that cloud! All that weird weather came from it. And it's moving away into the forest. Where is it going? 
Wanna go find out, guys? Sure. Maybe later on it'll rain dinner. The storm. It went into that house. We'll stay here. We're scared. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Huh? Oh, it's okay. Come on, man. You're not disturbing anything. I was just sitting here, controlling the weather. Controlling the weather? Huh? Uh, I don't know what it's all about either, Odie. I hope this is a two-part episode so we can find out. Uh. No! You cannot go with us! Garfield, I promised Liz a night out with just the two of us. Besides! You're not allowed in Vito's anymore. Not after what you did last time there. Uh. No, we're not giving up. Wait here. Suction cups, I've been saving them for an emergency. And right now, not getting to go to Vito's is an emergency. Here, put one on each paw and do as I do. So, how did he get himself banned from Vito's? I think it was the trick with the bungee cord. Let us see. A table eight ordered a plate of pasta with a meat sauce. <laughs> a chicken of parmesan with a side of penny. <laughs> a plate of spaghetti marinara. Hey, where did all the other dishes go? <laughs> uh, could I get an order to go? You pasta pilfering a pussy cat. You fettuccine filching a feline. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the marinara sauce. Yeah. She is a perfect. Truly throw myself into everything I could. And after they hauled Vito out of the marinara sauce and gave him artificial respiration, he <laughs> banned Garfield from his restaurant. In fact, he banned all animals. I can't even take Odie in. So I guess we won't be seeing Garfield or Odie at Vito's for a while. They wouldn't dare to try and get in there. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Arbuckle. Vito's lasagna just for the two of you. Mmm, it smells delicious. It's because it is delicious. Oh, Vito's lasagna. So close and yet so far. The lasagna just sits there, looking delicious, mocking me. Allowing itself to be consumed by others. There must be a way to get us in there where that lasagna is. This is called thinking, Odie. You ought to try it sometime. <laughs> Don't complain. You're just jealous because I have the legs for this. It is always a pleasure to welcome you into my humble restaurant, Mr. Arbuckle, providing you come without the cat. I told Garfield he had to stay home. And he obeys me because I'm firm and... <gasps> You brought your little bambinas, and how charming they are. Garfield? Garfield? Where is that handsome cat? I'm going to take you home and lock you in the basement until you're... Ah, Barco! <gasps> what a nice surprise running into you here. 
<laughs> Mr. Barker, yes. Uh, Liz, this is Mr. Barker. I do cartoons for a magazine he publishes. Nice to meet you, Mr. Barker. Uh, you know, Arbuckle, I was thinking you weren't the right kind of person to fit in with my magazine. You're firing me? I was considering it, but seeing you here with your lovely family... F -f -f family no. <laughs> I misjudged you. Families are the bedrock of society. I like employing a man with a lovely family. How long have you two been married? M married oh, oh no, we're not. Uh, huh? Liz and I have been married for uh, how long is it, dear? Mm -hmm. Ten five years. years. Uh, five years. Uh, ten years. Hey, I forget how long I've been married, too. The point is, you have these two lovely daughters. <sighs> uh, Beetle, more lasagna. Uh, coming right up, Mr. Arbuckle. I never knew Mr. Arbuckle had kids. She didn't want to say anything, but the one on the right, she has the face of a puppy dog. More <laughs> Vito's lasagna on the way. Hiya, Normal. What you been up to? Oh, same thing as always. Just being adorable. Mm -mm. Vito sure smells great. Oh, sure does. Wish I could get me some of that delicious food. Whoa. This way. Oh, the viewers of my show are absolutely gonna uh. love this. John, tell him the truth. Tell him we aren't married and these aren't our daughters. But he's my boss, and he thinks it's nice that I have a wife and kids. Huh? Hey, oh, food fanatics! This is everyone's favorite food critic, Eddie Gorman! <laughs> Coming to you live from Vito's Pizzeria. Buongiorno. Vito's is a fabulous place to revel in ravioli and munch on manicotti. Have on the side, mm -hmm. excuse me, Mr. Gourmand, more pasta for table two. Oh, let's see who's having this feast at table two. Ah, I like a man who cares enough about his children to feed them well. They sure have healthy appetites. Yeah. Hey, isn't that Garfield? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Garfield. I'd know that sound anywhere. They're having a feast in there. How do we get ourselves some of that? We need dresses and wigs. Where are we gonna... I'll do anything for Italian food. Huh, I can't believe it. I'm even cuter this way. This is John Arbuckle. He's a cartoonist who works for my magazine. <laughs> oh! Hello, Mr. Arbuckle. And this is his wife, Liz, and their two beautiful daughters. Uh... Hey, let us have some of that. <clears throat> let us have some of that. Excuse me, there are four beautiful daughters. <laughs> John Arbuckle, you and your wife, Lynn, have such lovely children. My brother is married? With four kids? Oh, Dad! It says on TV that John not only married Liz, but that they have four daughters. Why didn't our daughter tell us that she married that cartoonist? John, how often do you come here to Vito's with oh. Miss Arbuckle and the little Arbuckle children? Uh, well, I, uh, <laughs> well, that is... John, this has gone on oh. long enough. Either you tell them the truth or I will. Uh, I have something to tell you, uh, about my wife and daughters. <laughs> hey, you notice, when John lies, he turns the same color as Vito's red sauce. Mm. Mm. I want another meatball. I want six meatballs mm -hmm. and more garlic bread. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Mr. Arbuckle's daughters, they eat more than that cat of his. What is it you're trying to tell me, Mr. Arbuckle? Uh, well, you know, I, I work for Mr. Barker here and... Oh, indeed he does. I'm so impressed with his great family here. I'm giving oh. Arbuckle a big promotion and a raise. Oh. Oh. Oops, dropped my napkin. I won't look good with marinara huh? sauce all over my dress. Mamma mia! What is it is? 
Hey, pussy cat! In my restaurant! And the puppy dog! And another pussy cat! And you! Trick or treat! Could I have another pepperoni pizza, please? All of you! All of you! All of you! Out of my restaurant! Out! And you can make that to go. Ah, uh, Barkle, your daughters are cats and dogs? Uh, I can explain, Mr. Barker. Well, no, I can't, but... <laughs> the truth, John. <laughs> women and children first. Especially cats dressed like women and children. When I get my hands on you, cat... <laughs> Look out! This is terrible! They simply ruined the end of my show! Out! All of you out! And never darken my pizzeria again! Mr. Barker, Liz isn't my wife, and these obviously were not my daughters, and I'm sorry I let you believe that. Ha, 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 this is the funniest thing I ever saw. Draw it up as a cartoon and send it in. I'll give you a bonus. There, you see, John? You kept your job. Things didn't turn out so bad. Whew. We didn't get dessert. <laughs> I guess everything did work out okay. We didn't get dessert. Almost forgot. Here is the bill for what your daughters <sighs> ate. Pay me and then never come in again. <sighs> Everything worked out almost okay. We still didn't get dessert. Vito will get over it in a day or so. He always does. You're right. But right now I just want to relax and not have anyone else upset with me. Surprise! Surprise! Congratulations on your wedding. Congratulations on your marriage. I, I know you'll be real happy. Why didn't you tell us? I, I can explain. Listen, I can explain! Hey, Odie. Wedding cake. We did get dessert. <laughs> no, no, not the couple on top. That's plastic. <laughs> We're having a dinner party to celebrate. <laughs> well, it's kind of a neat story what we're celebrating, so why don't I tell you about it? It started yesterday. We're at Vito's, and he was especially happy. <laughs> ah, one Vito's special for my favorite customers. You seem overjoyed today, uh, Vito. Oh, I am. You know the great food critic, Ed Gourmand? Well, on his show today, he is going to give me another great review. <gasps> it is a time. Oh, oh, oh. Today, I'm going to tell you about a place called Vito's Pizzeria. You listen to this man. He knows. It stinks. <laughs> Crap, disgusting pizza. The crust tastes like... Paper, mm -hmm. yeah, a paper plate, only burnt. And don't get me started <laughs> on that miserable excuse for cheese. Uh -huh. It tastes like mud, but with less flavor. Also, <laughs> I think the pepperoni is rinsed. I am ruined. You're not ruined, Vito. You're still a great chef. Hey, how about making my cat 10 lasagnas? Uh. I shall never make lasagna again. The thing was, Eddie Gourmand wasn't just insulting Vito's fine cuisine. He was cranky about everything. That new hamburger stand on 7th Street. It stinks, too. In fact, all hamburger stands stink. And so does 7th Street. And the entire west side of town. And this show. And that ugly shirt my stage manager is wearing. It stinks. I quit. Whoa. What got into Eddie? That's what we wanted to know. He'll be so glad to see us. What do you want? I don't care what you want. Did you bring me anything? No. Nope. Well, then just leave me alone. 
Don't you think that was kind of odd? Not really. It's uh, my standard greeting for normal. It turns out we'd interrupted a call from Eddie's boss. All right, all right, if you insist, I'll go to this doctor, you know. Hey, I need you to drive me to see this doctor and step on it. Am I ever that annoying, Odie? Don't answer that. So John drove Eddie to this doctor and we waited outside. Tell me, Mr. Gromond, why are you so hostile lately? Hostile? What idiot said I was hostile? And by the way, this couch is uncomfortable and it's ugly and it's... Ah. Excuse me one moment, please. Who picked out these drapes? Something is bothering your friend, but I can't get him to tell me what it is. Isn't there anything you can do? He's usually not like this. There's one thing I can try. It's a new invention that lets us get inside the patient's brain. <gasps> Don't worry, boy. No one would ever get inside your brain. First of all, they'd have to find it. They waited until Eddie took his afternoon nap. Then they wheeled him into a lab and put this device on his head. Let me see if I have this straight. This machine lets you actually crawl into his memory? Well, not actually into it. I'm too large to fit down the psychic tunnel. It opens into the mind. If I were smaller, I could get down there. I'll just have to peek. And we'll go back into his memory and see what it is that's troubling him so. The psychic tunnel is opening. And this cat's going in for a close-up look. It felt kind of weird going through Eddie's mind, like falling into beef stroganoff without the noodles. And suddenly, there I was in his past. I wonder which one of these kids is Eddie. And there's my answer. He seems to be a most unusual child. When I grow up, I want to be a fireman. When I grow up, I want to be a nationally famous food critic. He seemed to be off to a good start. The tuna noodle casserole was a bit overcooked, and the carrots had a touch too much salt. But the tapioca pudding gets four stars. How did he learn so much about food? More hmm. supper, Mom! More supper! Oh, that's how. Here, Eddie, dear! The roast turkey is done just the way you like it! Oh, the giblets are spectacular! Did you make your fabulous stuffing? Of course I made my fat. Oh, and my award-winning biscuits that make your taste buds tingle. <laughs> oh, you're the best son in the world. <laughs> you are the best mother in the universe. This conversation is almost enough to kill your appetite. Hey, kitty, I don't know where you came from, but would you like to join me? There's plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I said, Almost. <laughs> You're right. It's Garfield. Garfield, what are you doing inside Eddie's memory? You come out of there right now. No, I like it in here. <laughs> <laughs> More of your creamy, delicious mashed potatoes, Mommy. <laughs> oh, Eddie, dear, hmm? do, do you really think you should eat quite that much? They're so high in calories. <laughs> you won't give me everything I want? <laughs> you don't love me! <laughs> No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll get your mashed potatoes right away. 
way. <laughs> oh, Mommy loves you. Oh, oh, and you'll want your gravy too, won't you? <laughs> Suddenly, I found myself in a gale force gravy storm, pelted with little pieces of giblet. It blasted me clean out of Eddie's memory. We seem to have tapped into a deep, painful memory for Mr. Gourmand. Why won't you feed me, Mommy? Don't you love your little Eddie? And there's the problem right there. He has some sort of problem with his mother not letting him eat whatever he wants? Apparently, that would appear to be what's making him so cranky. <laughs> I didn't quite understand it either, but I knew what we had to do. Find Eddie's mother. Even John figured that out. We searched and finally, we located her. Ah. Uh... Mama Gourmand's health food store? Hey! Eddie's mother had a little shop over on 7th Avenue. I haven't seen my son in a couple of years. Does he still weigh as much as a small truck? A medium-sized one. What happened between the two of you? He called up and asked me to make him all his favorite foods for dinner. I said, sure, but I wasn't going to stuff him full of calories. I said I was going to feed him a healthy diet, and he screamed, you don't love me! And he hung up. As always, it was up to the wise cat to figure out what to do. And I did. At the TV station, Eddie was getting ready to do his show. Good to have you back, Eddie. Ah, who cares what you think? And why are you still wearing that ugly shirt? There's someone here to see you. I have a show to do. I don't want to see anyone. Mama! What are you doing here? You came to apologize and to say you'll cook me all my favorite foods? I'll make you dinner, but I won't help you shorten your life by putting on weight. I want to keep you around as long as possible. I used to think giving you everything you wanted was a way to say, I love you. This is a much better way. Well, that kind of ends our story. Eddie got back to being Eddie, and he gave Vito a good review. And for the best pizza in the world, go to Vito's. Just don't eat too much of it. I am back in the business. Uh, this must be because of Mr. Arbuckle and his cat. I shall take them a feast. In fact, he should be here any minute with it. Hey. Oh, Mama Gourmand is cooking dinner for all of us, including Eddie. Something healthy, she says. That's why I'm glad Vito's delivering food. Ha! My way of saying a thank you. And a fine way it is. I'll take those, Garfield. These are not on your diet. Just remember, it's for your own good. Okay, I'll try to remember that, but... It's not going to be easy. Since half past the beginning of time, men have had wishes. Dreams of wealth, power, love, and all that can be desired. Tales are told of magic forces that turn wishes into reality. One such tale involves a bejeweled bottle, a magic genie, and three wishes. It is a tale told time and again, and told this day about a man named John Arbuckle. Mm. Odie seems to be having a good time. Don't go too far, Odie! How are you enjoying the beach, Garfield? Oh, it's not so bad. Especially when you bring everything you need from home. You can do this if you have a truck and a 10 mile extension cord. <laughs> Die. 
down the beach, the puppy dog was there when a glistening huh? bottle washed up on the shore. Huh? Ooh. <laughs> it was so attractive, so magical, that he had to take it back to his master. Sorry I have to get back to the clinic. Bye, Liz. <laughs> what did you find, boy? <gasps> huh? Hmm. I can't make out most of the writing, but there's something on here about unleash the genie, three wishes. <laughs> you find silly stuff on the beach. Sure do. <sighs> three wishes? It's mine. I got it. It's mine. I got it. Garfield, do you think it's possible? Three wishes. I know just what I'd wish for. So do I. Riches beyond compare. <laughs> Fame all around the world. <laughs> and success in everything I do. Lasagna. More lasagna. And even more lasagna. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? No, no, not here. Let's take it home and open it there. Oh, wait. What about the... Nah, never mind. We can just wish for new ones. John Arbuckle hurried home. And there, he decided to do a bit of research before uncorking the bejeweled bottle. So with my first wish, I'll wish for a million more wishes. And just before I use all of them up, I'll wish for another million. And another, and another. It says here that the legend of the genie in the bottle goes back thousands of years. Some genies are good and some are bad. To get rid of a bad genie, you hey, must... Never mind that. I have my first 193 wishes all set to go. All right. Here goes. <laughs> ah, is right, pup. I haven't been so disappointed since John made eggplant parmesan. Well, it was kind of a silly dream. Imagine, a magic genie in a bottle. Come on, I'll go make us some eggplant. of the bejeweled bottle. Oh, I did, I did. My name is John Arbuckle, and for my first wish, I would like... Silence! I am Omar! Omar? What kind of name is that for a genie? Thank you for releasing me, John Arbuckle. And now you shall grant me three wishes. Me? No, you've got it backwards. You're supposed to grant me three wishes. Are you going to grant me three wishes, or do I have to turn you into a frog? What's your first wish? I want, I want lasagna! Hey, he took my wish. Lasagna? I have been locked in that bottle for hundreds of years. I'm hungry. Get me lasagna, 50 pounds of it. Lasagna? Well, at least I know how to get that. Hey, tall, dark, and smoky. You have all these magic powers. How come John has to get you what you want? I like being waited on. Okay, that I understand. Vito, John Arbuckle, I need 50 pounds of lasagna. That's right, half my usual order. In no time at all, Omar's first wish was granted. <laughs> Are you going to eat that? Yes. Yes, your geniness, sir? For my second wish, I want dancing girls. Dancing girls? I can't find dancing girls. You want to be a frog? 
I can find dancing girls. Dancing girls, dancing girls. Where am I gonna get dancing girls? Hello? Hi, Liz, it's me. Liz, would you like to do me a big favor? Soon, Omar's yeah. second wish was granted. Sort of. <laughs> Very good. Very good, I vote yes! John, remind me again why I'm doing this. So your boyfriend doesn't get turned into a frog. Oh, I knew there had to be a good reason. Uh, Omar, uh, sir, uh, could we get your third wish over with now? Certainly. For my third wish, I would like <laughs> a million more wishes. <laughs> he keeps stealing my wishes. Huh? Yeah, I want more food, more dancing girls, and buy me video games, and clack like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> What am I gonna do? Probably live on a lily pad and eat flies. Uh -uh. Genie or no genie, I've got to stand up to him. Omar, whatever it is, the answer is no. I'm not granting you any more wishes. <laughs> You're right, Odie. I have to do something. The clever cat thought and thought, trying to conceive a plan that would... Hey, lady! I'm trying to think here. Sorry. Odie, John found something on the internet earlier about how to get rid of a genie. Uh -huh. Come on! It took him but moments to find it. See here, to get rid of a bad genie, you must get him to say his name backwards. He will disappear, and you'll be granted one wish as your reward. Whoa! I even get a wish? But how do I get him to say his name backwards? I want more food! More food! That was when the clever feline got his idea. I got an idea. We're going down to Vito's to get more food. <laughs> The cat and dog hurried to the place known as Vito's Pizzeria. There, they convinced the one named Vito to print up a special menu just for them. Then, they hurried home. Omar wants food! If I don't get my food wish soon, I'm going to turn someone into an art park! Bet you can't spell it. Here, Omar, a menu from Vito's. Just pick out whatever you want. I want everything! I want the spaghetti, I want the ravioli, I want the pizza, I want the ramo! What's ramo? Ramo is Omar backwards. Oh. <laughs> you tricked me into saying my name backwards! You Sorry, you'll be sorry. I'll turn you into a slug. Slug, Put a cork in it, fella. <laughs> He's gone, Odie. We'll take the bottle back and throw it in the ocean. And remember, Garfield, you have a wish. Thank you, narrator lady. Right, Odie. <gasps> I have a wish. I can wish for anything. I can wish for money, I can wish for lasagna, I can wish for money and lasagna, I can wish for power and fame and more lasagna, and success and... Garfield. <sighs> but I guess I have to wish to get John back to the way he was. I wish, I wish everything was the way it was this morning. <laughs> Odie seems to be having a good time. Don't go too far, Odie! How are you enjoying the beach, Garfield? And so there is this lesson. Be careful what you wish for. You just may get it. Again, and again, and again. Ah! <laughs>